Okay. So, few years back, uh, when the, at the time of data science and big data, uh, there was a fishing company trying to do data science. And apparently the manager told them, so there was a team, they were trying to figure out, find some insights, etc. Manager told them only to show charts that goes up. So the team get together, tried, nothing was going up. Tried really, really hard, and they find one chart. X is source time, Y axis shows the weight of the age, X axis shows age, Y axis shows the weight of the fish. When the time goes, fish grows. So, we can apply technology, but not every application of technology creates value. So, when we try to do AI, actually it's not about AI. Because it's the value that AI creates. Outcome very often depend on how you apply the, your technology, AI, the force, rather than how hard you are trying, how much you invest, how complicated the technology is. So today, I'm not going to talk about how great AI is. I'm not talk about, going to talk about how it happened. I'm not going to talk about how the future will look like. Because I'm pretty sure you have heard it enough. So let's try to go and talk how we can create value with AI. So if we look, we, this is in like fourth, fourth incarnation of AI we are in. We have LLMs, we have the older, now we, our toolbox is bigger, we had the, this older options, and now we have LLMs, RAG, etc., a bit more too. So let me start with uh, one use case. I saw this like 10 years ago, which I saw as a real value. So I saw this in uh, 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 apparel manufacturing floor. They have the factory floor. They are creating uh, garments. The last step is to the person, a person would take the garment there's a board, it has certain dimension mark. They put the garment in, there's a camera on top, it'll do the basically image processing and there's a button goes green or red. It's just making sure that the garment is done in the right proportions. The technology wise, Reasonably simple. I mean, if you have done uh, image processing, etc., it, it's pretty simple. Nothing, uh, nothing huge. But the, apparently, it makes a huge difference because the, now the quality control, the risk of making a mistake on the quality control goes way down. And apparently, it helps also a lot because, like these factories, they are they are creating garments for the top brands. And their question is, how do you make sure it won't, like, won't get rejected? But the moment this solution come in, it was an easy set. Right? So it's, again, it's not that technology, it is how it is applied made the difference. So these are some of the examples of use cases, what we call digital transformation. The idea that you use technology to make a difference. 
right? So I won't go through everything. So uh, I won't I won't go through every line in the slides, but we'll share the slides, right? So you will see that a lot of these use cases, these are example kind of groups of use cases where you can use technology to make the difference. You can see the AI appearing in many places. So I'll give I'll go through a few examples. The first one is to use AI to make your product or website seamless. So the goal is to make the user feel like that. Anticipate him, show him, show him where he is, help him, if possible, even do the right thing without asking him. This has been for happening for a long time, right? Personalization, recommendations, etc. Okay, so that's the first one. The second one, customer support. This is a topic that we saw like a lot of success with LLM-based solutions recently. For example, this company, they were able to handle about two-thirds of all queries. So you could use, so there are many ways to use this. You could use it internally to improve the, used by your internal support team to make them efficient. Or you may put it outside to the user directly. Or you may use churn prediction and align it with your efforts. Another one. So, okay, how many of you have watched either Martian or Apollo 13? Okay, so you, you might remember that in both, they had this physical twin, right? When the, the shuttle was in trouble, the, they basically brainstorm with the physical model to figure out the answer. So the NASA has been doing that for a long time. The idea is that Whatever the system, physical system you have, you create a digital copy that you would use to analyze, understand, and sometimes when you troubleshoot, you can actually deal with the exact model. Right? Uh, one, one case study is that basically they were changing how the, in the supermarket, how they lay out the aisles and the checkout process so they could simulate. Uh, the older version, I mean, this the cooler version, the older version is called simulations. Right? So you simulate, you basically model the system, you simulate. There are a lot of use cases around this. So another variation is the removing friction. Uh, I had a personal experience of this. So I, so I used to use a very old phone, a very old iPhone. I'm like, usually phone is a phone. I buy a new one when it falls apart. I had to buy a new one recently because the WSO2 has an app to su submit Liu to open the doors. And I'm like, I, because my phone is very old, I'm like the guy who debugging everything because nothing works. So I decided to buy a new one. I brought the one. And actually, the face ID thing blew me away. Because it's so natural. And then I realized, oh, the, that one button they had, that's gone too. So it's like, I mean, we think we are like logical beings, but we are so sensitive to these emotional things. And if we are so, same for the users, right? So if you can remove this friction, it can make a big difference. So there are a lot of use cases around that. So the, the, the real, real test is, if we really use in the, if this really working, technology disappears. You don't see it anymore. Right? So now that whatever the button is gone, everything gone, you look at it, oh, it turned up and works. The next one, secure your systems. If you want to get into a subset of in computer science or in uh, computer related that never goes away, this is the topic. So 
use cases, go from biometric, uh, face ID, these kind of things, to trying to look at what's going on and do adaptive authentication authorization. Look risky, ask for more things. I mean, he logged in yesterday, he came back, for same machine, same fingerprints, fine, let him in. Okay. Okay, so, so far, we talk about how do, how do you create, so the, doing AI means creating value. Right, so if, you, if, if there's one thing I want you to remember, that's the most important thing. So, and we went through several use cases and discussed. So let's get to, okay, how to make this happen? What are the challenges? So when somebody come and told, tell me about AI use case, my first reaction almost always is, the, is there a way to do it without AI? And it's actually throw some people off because it's like so. But the thing is, I know how expensive AI is. I know how much work. If there is a simpler solution, it will save you a lot of time. So it's, in my opinion, that's the first question you want to ask. So, I mean, there are a lot of, lot of stories, but the, uh, I'll tell one. Toothpaste manufacturing company. Uh, nobody knows whether this is true because it's everywhere and there are variations. Toothpaste manufacturing company, once in a while, toothpaste goes out without the toothpaste. What do you do? So they build a very complicated measuring thing to detect and put a warning. They put it in, great. CEO checked after a few months, no complaints. Okay, everything looked good, no more complaints working. Then he go and check, has the alert uh, has been ever fired? It has only been fired once. So he was, okay, what's going on? I mean, it seemed to be happening, but the AI thing is, is doing nothing. But how does it get fixed? So he go and go to the production line, and then somebody said, ah, oh, okay, I, I can tell you. So there was a fan running next to the, the production line. Uh, because the guy, when it, the alarm goes off, the guy has to come and remove it. So he figured a simple solution, run the fan, the thing will get blown away, problem solved. So uh, this, uh, this, uh, this is a famous engineering story. We, nobody knows whether it's actually true, but anyway, the moral is true, right? I mean, I, it, to me, it's a, it's a one thing to remember. If you put the model, check actually what it's doing. Right? And sometimes, I mean, if it works, fine, but the, that'll give you the understanding. So this is a checklist to try to kind of go through if you're trying to apply a model. First, is the value clear? What's the problem you are trying to solve? If there's no problem, don't solve it. The second, for that problem, can you solve it without AI? Answer is yes, it'll be cheaper. The third, how do you know that it's working? With LLMs, actually, you can work with less data, but still to make whether it, know whether it's work, for most use cases, you need some data to verify. And of course, you need to know whether, can I use that data, what's the copyright, what's the, uh, what's the policy, is it in the terms, you want to know. Next, if the AI works, if I get that answer, what I'm going to do with it? Is that clear? Can we implement that? 
what can go wrong and finally how we are going to operate it so let me quickly take churn prediction as a motivating example value value is clear because the the churn so most businesses okay it depends on what kind of businesses it is but most companies most businesses would spend a lot of money to acquire a customer it takes many years to recover that expense and a happy customer will keep giving you money versus a churn is a disaster because you had like burned a lot of money to even get that right so i mean you can you can put simple numbers and it make a if you can reduce churn by 1% 2% the bottom line move significantly okay yes so clear value can we solve it without the ai i mean it up to the your chief customer officer maybe he has great intuition you need whatever model you build in this case you need to compare against what you are doing right now how do you know whether it's working yeah most likely you will have the data i mean if you if you are not tracking the customers you won and lost i mean it's a disaster so usually you have the data um uh, can you use that data here okay depends on your terms go and check your terms and conditions is it allowed to do that what action can we can you take give more attention give them offer etc you need to think it through can they give me but look okay the risks i mean now if you are going to give them a huge discount it there may be a risk but generally if you go and so let's say you get a get a forecast that is 70% accurate right most probably it will work out because the there's no harm in go and be nice to the other guys too so in this case it's fine so with that you we need to dig into the risks right so we know we have heard about all those risks so that's a very important point to understand each of these lot of these especially buyers the fourth one humans are less accurate than most models but there's a catch though because for example if human being been biased each guy biases in little bit different way it's kind of cancel it out let's say i mean let let's say that there's a great model to predict whether a student would finish their graduate program let's say it has great accuracy what will happen all the universities will use it now what will happen now if you are the that one person where it is accurate you can get in you can't get to any university now versus maybe before that the admission committee may be biased maybe they are 10% wrong but each one would be wrong differently so you will get to one if you are okay i mean so that's that's a said that there's no chance but there's a there's a gray area right so the, the so these are the challenges right because the moment you put the ai in usually it goes to the background you don't see what's going on and then everything start to do the same thing so these are the complexity so th these three are common kind of okay types of use cases the first one 
risk of a wrong forecast is fine. Google, Amazon recommendations. If you don't like it, you don't pick it, fine. The variation of that, yes, there may be risk, but the person can, they know, they can select. There's a reasonable chance. The third one, even critical cases, sometimes AI can work because you can collect enough data, you can build a model, you can take time to train, self-driving, etc. So usually these three works, and there are other cases too, but the, it's, it's kind of useful to realize it and understand why it's working. Okay, so this is the usual process. Malit will talk through this in a lot of detail, right? So I, I, so the, uh, the, you build a model, but you need to verify. Usually you want to get it to some limited testing mode that you tweak, you make sure it works, etc. And then continue to monitor. The final comment, Unfortunately, most models, we don't know how they work. Now, yes, AI is mimicking us, which is great. The trick is, they don't fail like us. Right? So, for example, these flash crashes at stock markets. There's hundreds. So there are $100,000 books in Amazon. So, so because we don't know exactly how they work, we had to be careful, right? I say like it's a little bit like having a fox as having a fox as a pet in your house. Uh, I mean, it may be okay, but you need to keep counting the chickens. They may be disappear, and they're crafty. So, you want to monitor them, put the guardrails kind of ask, okay, what's the craziest prediction it can give? What will happen? Okay, to wrap up, it's not about AI. It's the value, right? You always need to look from the value. If you can realize that value from other means, it'll be cheaper. Then, Think through how you're going to verify, what can I do with the results, what can go wrong, and be carefully manage the risks.